Are you currently stuck in a mindset of believing that you can't go out there and find your ideal customers and start selling your services as a business owner if you don't have a website? Now, this is one of the constant uh, common excuses I get from people that tell me they've been busy for months trying to get a website up and going or figuring out how to deal with hiring somebody and spending hoodles of money on building a website when it may not be the actual asset that you need right away to actually start garnering interest for your services as a business owner. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually start to attract uh, ideal clients and find the customers that you really wanna work with without a website and by using something that's already there for you in your environment, in the life that you have built that can actually be part of your strategy to get awesome clients. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Lydia Lee. I am a work reinvention strategist and a business coach uh, that supports and guides and mentors service-based business owners, up and coming or existing ones to really design a business they can love so that they can start having the life that they truly dream about. Now in this channel and everything that I do when it comes to teaching you some of the things that is necessary, right? To actually get out of your own way and start doing something big with your career and your business is to start to eradicate and, and those overcomplicated things that you think you need in order to be a successful business owner. But most importantly, all these limiting things that you think you need in order to get started. And I get this a lot because I get tons of emails and social messages on my Instagram channel, my Facebook channel about what holds you back. And so this video is really dedicated to all those people who's ever told me the one thing that keeps them stuck where they are to get clients or to even call themselves a real business owner is because of this one thing called their website, right? And that that is the part that they think that they're relying on to bring them the leads that they want. And I wanna show you alternative ways that you don't need a website. You can keep building it if you wanna do that, but actually you can start getting directly to the goals of attracting great customers, working with great customers, being paid to do what you wanna do a lot quicker than you think. Now, again, if you're new here, you might want to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. You can click on the subscription button or subscribe button and the notification bell button. Don't forget to tap that as well so that um, YouTube will remind you every time that I have a new video, which is every single week, I dedicate my time to making sure I'm educating and training you here uh, so that you can feel confident as a business owner and just get less unstuck or more unstuck uh, to do the thing that you wanna do uh, as a business owner. So how do you find clients if you don't have a website? Well, the first thing I want to say is that a website is something that will take time anyway for it to for Google to actually start to uh, index you, right? Start to position you as an expert in particular things. By the way, just because you have a beautiful site sitting on the internet doesn't actually mean clients will come. More often than not, people get stuck here and they think that if they spend the money and they spend the time doing their branding and writing great copy on their site, like this is what attracts all the clients, but it doesn't. A lot of times, and I've worked with many, many entrepreneurs uh, to help them really stop you know, getting this excuse stuck in their journey uh, is to really actually start to use different platforms and use different low hanging fruit opportunities to attract customers rather than relying on the site. You can absolutely still build that on the site, but don't rely on it because the ultimate truth is that it takes time anyway for your brand to be recognized in the interwebs, uh, but there's a lot more practical uh, and doable steps that you can start doing today that gets you closer to that client while your website's being built or while your current website website is generating the leads that it needs to generate, which could take six to 12 months for that to happen. So let's focus on simplicity. Let's focus on something you can control, right? Which is what we're going to talk about today. So the first part is low hanging fruit. Now, what do I mean by low hanging fruit? You might have heard me talk about it in several other videos before, uh, but low hanging fruit to me is about simplicity and ease. We want to not disregard some of the networks and social equity we have already built with communities and individuals and organizations that we already know. 
Can I tell you one thing? The people that I work with, they're all consultants, freelancers, coaches, service-based people. 99% of the time when I work with them to get their first client, it's never from their website. <laughs> I know, surprising, right? It's actually a lot from these sorts of networks of low-hanging fruit that I'm talking about. These are colleagues that you've worked with, bosses you've worked for, organizations that have already, where you've proven your expertise, they already trust you. They're the referral networks in um, memberships or associations you already belong to. They might be, these clients might already be in your Facebook friends group, right? Could be in the Facebook groups you're already joining, could be the meetups you're already participating in. This is what I mean by low hanging fruit. Now, my coach, Pam Slim, calls it your watering holes. Where are you already drinking from? <laughs> right? A great analogy. Where are you already participating in? Where, where do you have presence already in and trust already built in a particular network that you might have ignored? Because you think you have to go out there in the inter internet, in the wild, wild west of the internet to look for leads, cold leads that actually need a lot more time to convert to trusting you and buying from you. Let's start where you already have some play, right? Where you can do things a lot more easily. So think about what are these watering holes? Where are these organizations, associations, groups, right? People you know, people that trust you, people that are happy to refer you, right? Old companies you've worked for, like my first client in my consulting business when I first started seven, eight years ago, was my actual employer <laughs> that I negotiated consultancy with. And that became my first client. So you may not have to look very far you know, for your first client. And it doesn't require a website for you to get a hold of these people. Actually, they don't want to see your website. They just want to know what you can do for them. Now, the second thing is using platforms you're familiar with. Now, website, again, it's not your only platform to generate leads, right? You can, especially if you're a consultant, especially if you're someone that do service-based stuff, like you don't need that many clients. You don't need to have a bombardment of thousands of people that are your fans in order for you to earn a good income. Very likely, if you are doing one-on-one -on -one services, you are really creating services that are val like very high-level value-based because you are doing very personalized work, right? Strategic work. So they're not buying a course. They might not be buying something passive, right? They're buying your knowledge, your time, and your expertise. So you are very likely not needing to find too many clients in order to survive. You have to actually just find a few clients that can actually, you know, you can have on for certain projects for a certain amount of time and get paid well and do your work properly. And you don't, your schedule is limited and your time is limited, right? So you want to find high quality clients, quality versus quantity when it comes to clients. So take a look at the platforms you're familiar with. Sometimes with things like a website, because you will have to figure out how to deal with the SEO and the keywords and what content you want to build in order to draw some cold leads into your website. Let's put that on pause for a minute and think about where you can actually have already been a part of like platforms that are like your social channels, right? LinkedIn, maybe you're on YouTube already. Maybe you actually could conduct workshops in the physical community center that you belong to in your city, right? I remember doing my first workshop in a, a female entrepreneurship meetup that I was joining every month. And I made a request. I said, can I do this workshop for free to help people that are escaping corporate to figure out what their skills are? What could they repurpose into a business? That was my first ever workshop. And that gave me my first few clients just from a network I was familiar with. And I was already a member, right? So why wouldn't they want to support my work? So these are the platforms of what I mean of familiarity and comfort that you don't have to build too much credibility on because you've done that already. You've done that social equity. You've put in the time to belong to these watering holes, right? That you can now leverage, right? And utilize in order to help you stand, uh, showcase, right? Your work and give and contribute to that community. And part of that process is then getting people interested in what you have to offer, especially if you're in the mode of giving rather than taking, right? As that inaugural step. Now, when I think about some of the some of the best clients that I've ever had that really did that transition from employee to working for themselves in a faster period of time, these are the people that didn't overcomplicate the process. They believed in simplifying things. They believed in doing what works for them and in a way that lets their personality shine. 
right? A lot of you might not know this, but I work with about 80% introverts and I'm not quite sure how they find me. It's probably because I talk a lot about doing business in your genius zone. And I think that really sparks something in introverts where they don't feel like they have to be an extrovert. They have to be this guru status, you know, in order to be credible and trustworthy. There's a quiet power in introverts that actually can be leveraged uh, for deep thinkers, right? An insightful depth of work uh, and body of work that be, will be marketed differently than someone who might be more of an extrovert, right? Everything you do in your business can absolutely relate to your strengths and what you know how to do. Now, when I think of one of the stories that pop in my head is uh, one of my clients, Tracy, who I've been working with for three years. We went from negotiating consultancy from for her actual employer to working from home, right? Then to actually taking them into part-time hours and then having more time for new clients and being able to actually fill her calendar. She went from making, I think like 75,000 a year as an employee to $150,000 a year as in a consultant, right? Working the same hours or less. Now she's not anyone special in the sense of that she knows more than you do. The only difference is that Tracy stuck to her guns about the way she wanted to get out there. And one of the things that was really interesting for Tracy's case was she didn't have a website. She had a LinkedIn profile that she had been, you know, committed to for however many decades she's been an engineer. And some of her first few clients that were still her clients today come from referrals. We forget about asking and making that ask of people that trust us. And with Tracy's uh, story, you know, she ended up, we ended up brainstorming what her low hanging fruit, fruit networks are, how to approach them in the way that she feels comfortable, that is her way of doing it genuinely and authentically. And actually conversations and building relationships was more her jam. Right? And that's why she attracted people that worked with her long term. She didn't have to find new clients all the time because of the kind of level of um, relationship and intimacy she really provides to all her leads. And one of the first things she did was actually contact some old classmates in her, the school she graduated for uh, when she was an engineer and go, well, these people know me, they've gone through the trenches with me. They now work for organizations that might need someone like me as a consultant. And we, she ended up actually pitching those ideas to people she knew. And guess what? Referrals came in by word of mouth. And how much stronger is that when someone refers you, puts like can back your work for you Right. And that lead is so much more warmer than someone on the Internet that has just found you and need to be convinced that you're credible enough to work with them. So something very simple, like asking for referrals, looking at the people that already support your work, can back your work. You've worked for them before. They know your expertise. They can vouch for your credibility. These are the people that are waiting to support you. And all you have to do is make that ask. And you don't have to make it sleazy. You don't have to make it cheesy, right? You can absolutely start to genuinely tell them what you're now looking for, where those areas of expertise you're more focused to help in, what kind of clients you're really looking for, and if there's an introduction that can be done. And then you do your job to help figure out and analyze how you can support those very clients. But asking for referrals, asking for that ask with the social equity of people you've built is a great way to start generating awesome leads for your business without having a website at all. Now, does that sound a lot simpler and less com overly complicated than having to rely on one thing that's keeping you stuck, like a website, on generating the customers that you really need for your business to survive and thrive? I hope so, because these are the sorts of things that I do best in when I come when it comes to designing the right kind of business and the approach to do business in a way that feels like ease and simplicity. Now, if any of these points or concepts today resonated with you, I would love to hear which one you're going to take on board. Which one are you going to allow and give yourself permission to do other than frazzle around, you know, and fumble around with the website? What's something that's in your control, right? These watering holes that you can tap into, drink from that can spark something within you today that can make the lead generation or getting to your ideal customers, your soulmate customers, a lot more easily. I would love to hear from you under the comments under this video and please share with us. Now, as always, I always love getting more people listening to these videos. If you believe there's someone that could benefit, someone that you know who is an up and coming consultant or is a current consulting looking to fill their roster with awesome clients, share this video and I know it would be really beneficial for them. And of course, if you are looking for guidance and mentorship from someone who's been where you are and can help guide the way to make this uncomplicated and simplified for you to create, design, launch, and grow a business so that you can do your work 
and be earning a great living from it and live the life that you want, perhaps you might want to consider mentoring with me. We can absolutely do that. Um, you can click on the link below to book a complimentary discovery call where I get a chance to figure out what you need. I get to analyze where you're at, where your dreams and your goals are, and I'm going to outline for you what it takes the steps, the simple steps that you can take to actually get there without fussing around with a bunch of busy work that isn't getting you the results that you want. So if we can have a human to human chat, grab a cuppa or whatever of your beverage of choice, and we can have a really nice conversation where I can really support you on knowing what your plan should look like. And if we work together, that's awesome. I would love to lead you through the trenches and help you build a business quicker than you imagined. Uh, and in a way that is aligned with who you are and your values that you stand, you know, grounded truly in. Um, and it gives us time to really figure out if we are a good fit to work with each other. Cause I know mentorship is an important part of your journey as well. Thank you so very much for joining me in today's episode. And I hope to see you again next week.